Hi, and welcome back to Free Science Lessons. By the end of this video, you should be able to calculate biodiversity. You should then be able to explain why a rich biodiversity is important for an ecosystem. In the last video, we saw that biodiversity includes habitat biodiversity, species biodiversity, and genetic biodiversity. I'm showing you here a woodland in the UK. Woodlands have a high level of biodiversity. That's because woodlands have conditions which can support a wide range of different species. This includes animals, plants, fungi, and microorganisms. Now, because there's a wide range of species, a woodland will have a complex food web. We can see a good example with badgers. Badgers are found in UK woodlands, and badgers eat a wide range of different species. Because there's such a diverse range of species in a woodland, food sources are abundant. This makes a woodland a stable ecosystem, where the number of species and the population sizes of these species rarely change. In contrast, a desert is a much harsher habitat. Conditions here are very challenging for living organisms. For example, temperatures can be extreme, and there are few sources of water. The species that we find here are highly adapted to living in desert conditions, and deserts have a relatively low biodiversity. This means that desert food webs are often relatively simple. Now, in the last video, we saw that species biodiversity has two factors. The first factor is species richness, which is based on the number of different species. The second factor is species evenness, which is based on the population sizes of the different species. An area with a massive population of one species and small populations of other species will have a low species evenness. A good example of that is a wheat field. Now, Simpson's index of diversity can be used to determine the species biodiversity of an area, and we calculate Simpson's index of diversity using this equation. Simpson's index of diversity, or capital D, equals 1 minus the sum of the total number of organisms of a particular species, divided by the total number of organisms of all species squared. Now, this equation is for the OCR spec. The AQA equation is similar, but is slightly different. OK, I'm showing you here the number of different species of fish caught in a lake. I'm going to calculate Simpson's index of diversity. First, we calculate the total number of all the species, in other words, capital N. There are 41 fish in total. Next, we divide the number of each species of fish by the total. For example, we have nine eels. 9 divided by 41 equals 0.22. Next, we square each of these values, and I'm showing you that here. Now, we sum these. In this case, that comes to 0.19. And finally, we subtract this value from 1 to get Simpson's index of diversity. This gives us a Simpson's index of diversity of 0.81. Now, the Simpson's index of diversity ranges from 0, which is no biodiversity, to 1, which is infinite biodiversity. So 0.81 shows that this lake has a high degree of biodiversity. Here's one for you to try. This shows the number of different animals found in a sewage outfall. So pause the video now and try this yourself. OK, the total number of organisms is 57. We now divide the number of each species by the total, and then square each value. We now sum these numbers, and we then subtract this total from 1 to get Simpson's index of diversity. We have a value of 0.294, which is low. This tells us that there's a low level of biodiversity in this sewage outfall. Sewage outfalls have a high level of pollution and a low level of dissolved oxygen. Organisms that live in these conditions are highly specialised, so areas that are heavily polluted tend to have a low biodiversity, with a very small number of species adapted to live in those conditions. OK, so hopefully now you can calculate biodiversity.